the next presentation will be about uh, left ventricular non-compaction. I uh, think that maybe most of you heard about this uh, condition that is uh, relatively uh, new but is causing some uh, discussion among the uh, sports cardiology uh, community. So I would like to explain a little bit a couple of things and to help you to understand how to stratify patients with uh, left ventricular non-compaction. So uh, left ventricular non-compaction is a cardiomyopathy. It's characterized by a specific phenotypic appearance, which is a double layer of the left ventricle with a non-compacted or spongy endocardial layer, as you can see here, that looks like a sponge, and the thinner epicardial compact layer. So we have two different layers, one external, which is compact, and one internal, which is uh, spongy or non-compact. This uh, disease is usually associated with left ventricular systolic uh, dysfunction and uh, also may be associated with diastolic dysfunction. And uh, the major concern about this disease is that uh, 10 or 15 or even 20 years ago, some studies were performed that demonstrated a high mortality and morbidity rate in these individuals. However, that were just the first studies about left ventricular non-compaction, and a lot of other studies have been carried out over time. And this condition is uh, increasingly being uh, uh, recognized worldwide. So there are now some studies that uh, reported that uh, you can find increased trabeculation in a large proportion of healthy and asymptomatic individuals, and it's just an incidental finding. There is a study that was published in Jack in 2016 about individuals that underwent a CMR, and a large proportion of up to 14% individuals performing a CMR for just a screening had increased trabeculation suggestive for left ventricular non-compaction. And uh, if we specifically talk about the athletic population, there was a study that was published in 2013 by the group of Sanjay Sharma that reported that 8% of the athletes had increased trabeculation matching the criteria for left ventricular non-compaction on an echocardiographic screening. So this high prevalence in asymptomatic individuals is unlikely to reflect a pathologic condition and is more likely to reflect a benign condition, a benign anatomical variant of the left ventricle. So there is uh, increasing evidence that uh, increased trabeculation are associated with a good prognosis and this has been demonstrated both in prospective and retrospective studies. I want to tell you a couple of examples. Let's talk about the retrospective studies. If we look at the epidemiological studies that reported the causes of sudden cardiac death in young athletes, in young individuals, we know that the most important causes of death are hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, uh, arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy, or channelopathies, or uh, uh, even coronary artery anomalies. But if we look carefully to the, all, the most recent published studies, we can see that LV hypertrabeculation is not reported as a cause of sudden cardiac death in young individuals. And this is a very important, a good message for you. Because what you have to think about is that maybe sudden cardiac death is not an early manifestation of this disease. People may die suddenly only if they develop a large left ventricle, a significant left ventricular systolic dysfunction, and if they develop symptoms. So in symptomatic patients, sudden cardiac death may occur, but in asymptomatic individual is extremely rare, and the demonstration of this is that the most important epidemiological study didn't report sudden cardiac death in, uh, uh, in athletes. In terms of prospective studies, we uh, have some uh, studies that have been published over the last years, and uh, this one was uh, performed in Italy. In this study, 113 patients with positive echo underwent a CMR with late gadolinium enhancement, and uh, uh, 
individuals with a diagnosis of left ventricular non-compaction based on morphological criteria were followed up for uh, an average of four years. And the cardiac events occurred in 31% of individuals. But which were the determinants of that? As you can see, the major determinants of outcome were symptoms, left ventricular dilation, left ventricular dysfunction, or late gadolinium enhancement. So the individuals that do uh, worse are those that have symptoms or large left ventricles or those with systolic dysfunction. So you have to keep in mind this while thinking about a patient with left ventricular non-compaction. So the morphologic appearance of a spongy left ventricle alone is not sufficient to draw conclusion about prognosis of these individuals. What is our experience at the Institute of Sports Medicine and Science here in Rome? We did a study in order to evaluate the prevalence and uh, clinical characteristics of individuals with hypertrabeculation. And from 2012 to 2015, we evaluated uh, 2,500 Olympic athletes that came for evaluation and did a complete cardiovascular evaluation, including echocardiography. Well, uh, the athletes that had positive criteria on echocardiography were 36 corresponding to 1.4% of the athletic population. But what does it mean? What did we do with these 36 athletes? Did they all have the disease or not? So out of 36 athletes that had this prominent trabeculation of the left ventricle, we thought that LV and C could be excluded in the vast majority because the prominent trabeculation were isolated, so not associated with symptoms, not associated with systolic dysfunction, no ECG abnormalities, so no other features suggestive of a cardiomyopathy. In a smaller proportion, nine individuals, we thought that left ventricular no compaction was unlikely because uh, the uh, uh, increased trabeculation were associated with some borderline abnormalities, uh, such as uh, anterior T wave inversion, or borderline ejection fraction between 50 to 55 percent, or ventricular, some isolated ventricular arrhythmias or palpitation. So in these individuals, what we said was just continue training, but and you have to do a periodical follow-up. But on the other side, three out of these 36 individuals were eventually considered having left ventricular non-compaction. Why? Because one had an ejection fraction of less than 50%. Another one had an ejection fraction of less than 50% and had a positive family history for sudden cardiac death. And one was identified in the context of a family screening and also had a positive genotype for a mutation causing this uh, disease. So this is to remark that uh, the increased speculation alone are not sufficient to make the diagnosis and you need something more to be prudent and to disqualify at least from training and competition. And now I would like to show you a couple of examples in order to show you how difficult and how easy in some cases can be the diagnosis. So this is a 16 years old male athlete, a kickboxing athlete with uh, no symptoms and completely negative family history. This is the resting ECG and you can see that is uh, normal. There are no abnormalities, the, uh, so there is sinus rhythm, the axis is normal, QRS complexes are normal, so absolutely normal. He underwent an exercise testing, and on exercise tests he had excellent exercise capacity, had normal blood pressure response to exercise, and didn't develop any arrhythmia, so all good news for him. And this is the echocardiographic examination you can see that uh, he had a left ventricular diameter of 50, which is normal for an athlete of his age and his uh, sport discipline. The wall thickness is 9, again is good. The relative wall thickness is 0 0.36, so it's balance uh, ratio between the walls and the left ventricular cavity, so all normal findings. But when we turn the probe and do the echo in the short axis, you can see 
that there is this increased trabecular pattern in the apical segment with this uh, meshwork of trabeculae. And we apply the echocardiographic criteria. One of the criterion is the Stolberger criterion that say that is positive when more than three trabeculations are present in the apical segment. So here we have more than three trabeculations, so this was positive. Another index is the chin index, the X over Y ratio. This is measured in diastole. X is the compact layer and Y is the overall layer of the left ventricle. When this index is less than 0.5, it's positive. And here we had 0.3, so it was positive. And then we measured one of the most famous, which is the Yemi criterion. This is measured in uh, systole, and is the ratio between the non-compact to the compact layer. So the uh, non-compact to the compact layer. And if it's more than two, it's positive. And here we had 2.1. So we had three out of three positive criteria for left ventricular non-compaction. And the compact layer, this is a good news, was not really thin because it was uh, six millimeters. However, we had three out of three positive criteria. Here is the four chamber view on the echocardiography, and you can see that the ejection fraction is normal. So the left ventricle is contracting well, and there are no wall motion abnormalities. So absolutely normal finding. The diastolic function was normal. So we had good properties in terms of relaxation of the left ventricle, in terms of compliance of the left ventricle. So no abnormalities in diastolic function. We did a CMR, because now we have CMR, and we want to do CMR to everybody, but we did the CMR in order to better evaluate this athlete, and uh, the CMR confirmed that there was a significant increase in trabeculation in the apex of the patient with positive criteria for left ventricular non-compaction. But the function was normal, and there was no late gadolinium enhancement. So, in order to make to take a final decision, what we have to do, as I told you before, is to do an integrated approach, and not just evaluate the morphology of the left ventricle. So you have to consider the overall clinical picture of the individual. So what about him? The family history was absolutely uh, normal. He didn't have any symptoms. The ECG was normal. He didn't have any uh, arrhythmias. The left ventricular cavity was normal, systolic function was normal, diastolic function was normal, the compact thickness was not thin, so it was absolutely normal. So he just had positive echocardiographic criteria. But we thought that he, this was not sufficient to disqualify him from training and competition, so we said you can continue training, you can continue competition with a periodical follow-up, and after three or four years, he's still doing well and didn't develop any dysfunction of the left ventricle and no events over follow-up. But now, I would like to show a little bit a different picture. This is another case, a 15 years old male athlete, a basketball player with no symptoms and negative family history. Here we have the ECG, and the ECG is... Uh, quite normal, there are no major abnormalities. Sinus rhythm, uh, normal QRS, normal uh, repolarization pattern, so normal ECG. On exercise testing, he had a very good exercise capacity, normal blood pressure response, but he had, had some uh, PVCs with uh, right bundle branch block morphology, so coming from the left ventricle. So we did a 24-hour alter monitoring that showed that he had around 500 PVCs during the 24 hours. So just quite a significant ar uh, arrhythmic burden. And this is the echocardiographic examination. I will explain you a little bit a couple of things. So the left ventricular diameter here was a 62 millimeter, which is quite large for a 15 years old uh, player. The left ventricular wall thickness was a seven millimeter, which is a little bit thin, in the, indeed, if you look at the ratio between the cavity and uh, left ventricular wall thickness, was a little bit decreased. So there was such as an eccentric remodeling of this left ventricle. Again, this is the short axis view. 
and uh, you can see the increased trabecular pattern of this individual. And again, we had more than three trabeculations, so the Stolberger criterion was positive. The Chin criterion was positive because it was less than 0.5. The Yeni criterion was positive because it was more than 2.0. And here, a difference to the previous one, we, has, we had a reduced layer of the compact, uh, we, uh, sorry, a reduced thickness of the compact layer because here it was only three millimeters. On the, on the uh, four chamber view, you can see that the morphology of the left ventricle was quite atypical because you can see that it is quite spherical here and uh, the ejection fraction was not normal because it was 48%, and we consider abnormal an ejection fraction of less than 50%. And uh, most importantly, he also had basal and middle septum hypokinesia. You can see that while the other walls are contracting well, here the basal and middle segment of the septum are not moving properly. So this is an hypokinesia, which is an abnormal finding. The diastolic function was uh, quite uh, a little bit uh, uh, abnormal. There were no major abnormalities, but not typical of an athlete. I would not discuss this in detail, but there were some just abnormalities on uh, tissue Doppler imaging that could suggest an initial impaired relaxation of this athlete. So how to deal with this second athlete now? So here we have the case number one, and here we have the case number two. So you can see that there are some differences in the integrated approach. So the family history here was uh, absent, the symptoms were absent, the ECG was normal, but he had some arrhythmias coming from the left ventricle. The LV cavity was dilated, the systolic function was impaired, diastolic function was impaired, the compact thickness was reduced here compared to the other one, and the echo criteria was positive. So, as you can see, despite both of these athletes had positive echocardiographic criteria, the second one had several features that suggested a cardiomyopathy, and for this reason, this athlete was disqualified from training and competition. So, uh, we have recently published a document about uh, the interpretation and use and indication for cardiovascular imaging in uh, uh, young competitive athletes, and I had the honor to uh, co-chair this document with Professor Pelliccia and uh, Professor Lancelotti, and in this document we provide uh, the tools to distinguish between uh, uh, normal finding of the athletes from cardiomyopathies. And there is a specific section about uh, the athletes with uh, uh, trabeculation. So, okay, I, I will just uh, discuss with you uh, what are the, the, the issues that can suggest a, uh, um, a pathologic condition. So the issues that will suggest a pathologic condition are a, a family history of sudden cardiac death, the presence of symptoms such as palpitation or syncope, uh, reduced ejection fraction on echocardiography less than 50%, reduced thickness of the compact layer, the presence of late gadolinium enhancement on CMR, the presence of T-wave inversion on ECG, a left bundle branch block on ECG, which is quite a typical finding of patients with left ventricular non-compaction, and exercise-induced ventricular arrhythmias are also uh, important. And again, abnormal diastolic function is another feature for left ventricular non-compaction. So to conclude, the diagnosis of left ventricular non-compaction should not be based only on morphological criteria uh, and should be based on an integrated approach. An adverse prognosis in patients with left ventricular non-compaction is associated with the dilated cardiomyopathy phenotype, so with le large left ventricles and with reduced uh, ejection fraction. Athletes with isolated hypertrabeculation should not be restricted from training and competition. Thank you for your attention.